Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I am the Pumpkin King, and welcome to Pure Imagination. This is a project that I've been wanting to do for a while where I'm going to be building over the next several months the greatest theme park that there has ever been. That means that I will have all the best rides, all the best attractions, all of the best scenery, and all of the best theming. And believe me, you know how much I love my theming. Everything is going to be themed to the nines. In order to accomplish this, I went and I came up with a plan for how to incorporate as many different storytelling elements into one park as possible. In order to make pure imagination, I have 24 themed lands. But in order to be able to build a park of that size, it is going to span over four maps and three video games and possibly more than that. The majority of the work for the park will be done in Planet Coaster. However, there will be live animal exhibits, so for that we'll be using Planet Zoo and Prehistoric Kingdom, and possibly Jurassic World Evolution 2 down the road, depending on the selection of the dinosaurs we want to go with. And there will be dinosaurs. I have 24 themed lands. Now, in order to fit all of them into the park and to have all the theming work together, I have taken those 24 themed lands and I've split them into four groups, or bronchials. Each bronchial has six nodes, which are the individual themed lands. And within the node, there are avioli, which are little squiggly lines around the outside to maximize the edge so that you get the most views and the most scenery with the least amount of space. This is actually a system that's based on nature. And it's something like what you would find on the leaf of, say, a fern or in the lungs. All of the individual bronchioles are arrayed around a central point, which would be able to see the entire park. The first bronchial contains the lands of ocean, pirate, age of exploration, dinosaur, jungle, and water parks. The second bronchial has the themes of Bavarian, fairy tale, garden, candyland, medieval, and mountain. Third bronchial contains horror, steampunk, Coney Island, circus, city slash studio, and western. And the fourth and final bronchial has the lands of sci-fi, desert, Asian, alien, African, and the world of tomorrow. I'll be building these lands with you, and we'll be going through and talking about a lot of the theming and stuff as I build the assets coming forward. But that's the basic plan. After I have all of the park maps laid out, I'll go in and start adding individual attractions and theming and builds and all kinds of other good stuff. So I'm very excited for this project, and without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into pure imagination. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I am the Pumpkin King, and in today's episode, we're going to be beginning our new playthrough of Pure Imagination. In today's episode, we're going to be doing a new playthrough, starting with Planet Coaster for Pure Imagination. Now, I've taken the liberty of starting up a new map. I have an alpine map here, just because I like looking at the mountains while I'm working. Uh, and I've gone in and I've kind of detailed out where I want everything to be and the size rough equivalents of what all I want in terms of the sizes. So let's take a moment and I'll go through what I have here. So first of all, uh, I found out that the maps are not perfectly square. They are off ever so slightly, but that's okay. Um... I divided the map into the six nodes that we're going to have uh, for this first project. We're going to have Horror, Steampunk, Coney Island, Circus, uh, and also uh, City Slash Studio and the Western over here. And um, each of these nodes is more like a guidelines than actual rules. Uh, there will be bleed from one to the other uh, as I blend together the theming for each individual node. Um, these squiggly lines here represent the avioli, and what I'm going to be doing with those is that is where we're going to be putting in 
rides. So, for example, you can take this little ride, put it over here. It's right at the top of this alveoli. Now, the reason I've done it that way is so that you can have the entrance come in on one side, the exit on the other side, and when you exit, you are pretty much right in the area to get in line for the next ride. So, like, if I wanted to, I could go in and get another ride, this one here, get that in position, and there we go. So, the line for this ride would come up this way, you get on the ride, and then you'd exit out here, and you'd be able to get right in line for the next attraction. Uh, I think, though, I am going to actually go ahead and delete them for now, uh, just because I want to have everything laid out properly before we do. Now, obviously, I can't go from one map to another in IRL, uh, but I do have indications marked on all of the maps as to where there will be connection points to the other maps. So, because we're starting with Bronchial number three, just because I really wanted to do the horror stuff and already have a lot of assets designed for it. Um, there are connections that go from the horror to the mountain biome and from the uh, steampunk down to the sci-fi biome. And also, the Coney Island connects with the desert and the uh, circus connects with the medieval, which would be off over this way. So I've gone in and I've laid everything out. I have all the zones designed and everything that I want. And the brown track that I have around the outside hedge here is where I'm going to be having my uh, train, the circumventing train that'll take you around to each of the six nodes uh, in this particular bronchial. So let's go ahead and put that train in first. So we'll go down here to track rides and I'm going to go with this nice uh, kind of steampunky looking train uh, and what I want to do is I want to put it in and then I want to design the stations uh, for this train so that they are themed to each of the individual nodes. Ooh. So now that we've got our train set up we can ride it all the way around um, and you can stop at different stops, get on and off, go around to all of the different nodes, and you'll be able to transport around the park without having to walk all the way around, uh, which is very nice. So, in today's episode, I'm going to try and get to the horror section. I've developed a lot of good assets for the horror section, and I think that will work out quite nicely. Let's go ahead and reestablish our path leads over to the mountain area and let's jump into the section here. it's the mystery shack from gravity falls and i will link in the description to the creator we are going to go ahead and put this on one of the MBOA, and i think i think i want to put it in right around over here and we can attach paths to that. This isn't a functional thing, it's just something that looks nice. Um, but we can still go ahead and put a path in. And that'll take us off the map towards the mountain bio. We can hook one uh, this way. And I also uh, for myself, have developed a little gift shop that goes along with it. Something that I'm going to be trying to do uh, very much with this series is I want to try to have all of the stuff that we make, all of the kiosks and the restaurants and the gift shops, I want it to be part of the landscape. I want it to be part of the theming. I want it to be done in such a way that it it looks like part of the attraction. And that is what I have done here. So if we take a look, I'm going to just zoom in on this real quick. This is just a memento little gift shop, but I have designed it to look 
like the front of the mystery shack um, based off of the screen caps and if we zoom in down here you can see i've even included a rather shoddily built uh bill cipher with his hand out just waiting for a good old handshake uh, i really love gravity falls it's a fantastic show if you haven't seen it it is one that genuinely surprises me that it was on the disney channel uh, it was really, really good. And we can also, just as the final touch, put in our totem pole. Again, link in the description for the creator. I got this from the Steam Workshop. It is an excellent totem pole, and they did a really good job uh, mimicking the style of the one on the show. So go ahead and rotate the sucker in. And now, oh, this needs to come down a little bit. There we go. So now, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and put in some trees. And I'm going to blend in the mountain biome with these spruce trees and then blend it into the horror section to be over in here. That's going to be more of a fall type kind of coloration. So now we can go ahead and start blending in some of the horror stuff. All right, so go back into our blueprints. The first one that I want to slap down is one that I'm very happy with. Uh, this is a screen accurate Adams Family House from the Adams Family Matters. And this is actually the very first thing I ever built in Planet Coaster. And it doesn't actually serve any particular purpose, but it looks cool and I like it. So I'm going to put it in. And then what I'll do is I'll run the path around so that it includes that into the path. All right, let's get some other stuff. So this is another build that I put together. This is the Amityville Horror House. Uh, it is the number one most haunted house in America, according to BuzzFeed and uh, Watch Mojo. And again, it is functional uh, insofar as it also has... It also has a... Uh, First aid station, restroom, and ATM inside there. And it does come with these fall trees, which is good because we can blend that in. So let's go ahead and slap that down. Next up, we're going to be wanting an information station, and I have already designed one. I built a lot of these assets preparatory to the first episode just because I wanted to get a feel for the build system. For the next episode, it's going to be much more in the line of you're going to be watching me build them. Uh, and this one I actually need to edit, I have just remembered. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to throw this in. And yeah, that should do just fine. And this is our little information booth, but it is also disguised to look like the Sanderson house from Hocus Pocus. It doesn't look much like it during the day, but if this was sunset, it actually would look pretty similar. I gotta say, it works out pretty good. Now, I do need to edit this very quickly, because when I was building it, put in this cog, I didn't realize that there was actually a water wheel. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that and replace it with a proper thing. One of the things that I've noticed with this game is that there are so many scenery pieces and so many building pieces that honestly, it's easy to overlook stuff and it's easy to get a little overwhelmed. Uh, and the other thing is, coming into this from Jurassic World Evolution, you know, I've been really kind of thrown off by the build program a little bit. It's just because it's very different from Jawa. But 
I'm, I mean, I'm starting to get the hang of it. So there we go. We got our water wheel in there. That's the one that uh, Thackeray climbs up to get inside the house. Uh, and there's actually a little smoke emitter on the inside here. So if we play, there's the purple smoke coming up out the chimney. So we've got ourselves set up with our information booth. We've got the restroom. We've got the first aid station, the ATM, a little gift shop. And now let's go ahead and put in our first restaurant. Here I have gone ahead and built a restaurant which is based on the Marston House, which this is the version from Castle Rock on um, Hulu. Or maybe on HBO Max. But this is the Castle Rock Marston House which was first mentioned in Stephen King's Salem's Lot. Get that down to the ground there. There we go. This is a steakhouse. It has a steakhouse inside it. So this is actually a functional restaurant in addition to looking like the Marston House. Uh, let's go ahead and put in our drink stand. Now, I did develop all three assets that I wanted for the uh, requirements here. This one I'm not the most proud of, honestly. Um, the build system, and I'm going to do a dedicated video on this, but the build system in this game really throws me off, especially when it comes to roofs. I don't know why it does this. I don't know why it is self-clipping like that. Um, it's just very irksome. But for those of you who are looking at this and saying, well, that looks familiar. Well, that's because this is, in fact, the house from Beetlejuice. And inside we have a little drink stand where you can get an energy drink, which I'm calling Beetlejuice. And if I say Beetlejuice one more time, it'll show up. So <laughs> there we go. But let's go ahead and throw this down. Uh, I want to have it over near the edge because I want to have this interior part here uh, to maximize the edge. We'll have an interior part here where we'll have rides and more stands. And stuff. So let's go ahead and get to that place. Yeah, right around there, I think should be okay. And I'm going to have to move it down. Yeah. And all this will be connected with Pat. But, so we got that. That's the house from Beetlejuice. And then the other eatery that I made for the horror section is right here. Now this is actually pulling double duty because it also works for the steampunk section as well. But if we slap this in, I want to try and get it right up on the curb here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we move it down just a teensy bit. There we go. Now that is a chief beef in there, but as you can read, is actually Mrs. Lovett's Meat Pies. This is film accurate to the uh, Tim Burton version of Sweeney Todd. And it is, I'm very happy with how that turned out. Although I have to say that this lighting isn't really doing much for it right at the moment. Um, but yeah, I'm very happy with how that turned out overall, and I'm really looking forward to being able to utilize that for both the horror and the steampunk section. We are, of course, going to want some rides in this area, and I have a few that we can maybe try out here. So let's take a look at the rides. I particularly want to try the track rides um, for the horror section. If we go to the blueprint, there are two that I was looking at. There's the Witch's Haunt, which I think we can put over here. 
near the train station. Yeah, I can see that being a thing. You put that over near the train station, and that way, when the train goes by, it kind of shows the ride from the train. I think that would be cool. So let's go ahead and slap that in. And the other ride that we had for this that was already in the blueprints is <coughs> the Jailer's Den. Which we can also go ahead and put in on one of these avioli, like so. Boom. Now, that gives us two rides in this area. And the other thing that I want to try and put in here, if I can fit it in, Let's move this over just a hair. I did get uh, from the workshop, I did get a really well done and absolutely gorgeous haunted mansion. Disney's Haunted Mansion from Walt Disney World. Now, I got the Haunted Mansion and I've got the gardens for it. But for whatever reason, I can't find the actual building, the actual dark ride part. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to put that right in here. If I can, just slap it right in there. And that way I have the rides along the side there. We can have our little walkway that connects the uh, paths over to all of this stuff. We'll build a nice train station that's themed properly for our train here, and then we'll go from there. So let's go ahead and get the paths in. Yeah, there we go. So if we hit play, I'll be able to test this ride and see how it goes. This is kind of cool. Get to go through this little haunted house and chairs rock and stuff. I definitely want to uh, make my own dark rides and do my own stuff, but I don't feel confident enough with it yet to be able to do that. But um, eventually I will be able to do my own dark rides and stuff and then we will be including them for sure. Rides. I think that ought to be pretty neat. All right, cool. She seems overly chipper about all of this, but I'll go ahead and get on out of that. So that's got its test. That's good. Um, and we can open that. And let's test this one. See how that goes. Hey, got a big old spider with animated legs and stuff here. This will be really cool once we start coming into like doing some of the other the other dark rides. Um, 
There was one that I tried to do in Jurassic World Evolution that I really wasn't able to replicate properly. Uh, it's the Forbidden Territory ride from the uh, IEGM, I think it's what it is. It's the one in Dubai, and yeah, this is floating. That's a problem. Um, what was the same? Oh, right. So, but yeah, and uh, they're called for giant spiders and lava and stuff, and I couldn't replicate it in the rest of Revolution. But now that we are in an actual park builder, we can actually do that. So I'm looking forward to giving that a shot. Oh, it's a witch! I wasn't sure at first. I thought it was like a clown. I suppose it could be a witch clown. Cool. Alright. Mix it out of that. And open that one up. We've got guests coming in. We've got guests visiting all our stuff. And I think that's where we're going to wrap it up for today. If you enjoyed today's episode, go ahead and hit that like button. And for more future content into pure imagination, feel free to subscribe. Also, you can support us on Patreon. The link is also in the description. But until next time, I am the Popkin King. I will see you later.